Hey guys, it is Liberty from Spirit Move Ministries, and I am very, very excited to be on with you. Um, there's uh, so much going on. We're so excited for everything that's coming, and I'm going to give you a snippet real quick of some of the stuff that we have going on, and um, we're on the road right now. First, let me just state that, okay? So every now and then, if I'm hanging on for dear life, it's because it's necessary. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not driving. Um, praise Jesus. Um, but we're on our way to Miami to hop on a flight to head to Kenya. And we are very, very excited about all that God's going to do there. And I thought I should get on and give a shout out to everyone who gave to make the trip possible. Um, you guys need to know that uh, we can't do this without you. Like we're doing this together. And um, I'm beyond honored and humbled to go there and do everything God's called me to do. Uh, we will be doing um, conference meetings during the day at the church with the pastors, the leaders, um, and uh, church members. And then at night, the, the mass crusades, basically four nights in a row. So we're doing four days of meetings um, during the day. And then we do a large crusade every night for four nights. Now, um, the crusade will be about 10 to 15,000 people. Um, the pastors on the ground and apostles that we're working with, um, they have gotten connected with uh, town leaders, um, maybe what we would call, you know, the mayor, the, the people. And he's had meetings and he's gotten everybody on board with this the big things that we're going to be doing and so 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 excited and honored um and so we're on the way to the um we head out tonight today if i'm pretty sure this is going to be posted the same day but this is monday the 20th and we fly out tonight um we head to Qatar. it's our first stop and it's a long it's a long way we got two days of flying guys then um we go from there like a 14 hour flight to um, Nairobi and then we switch there and go from a one hour flight from Nairobi to Mombasa and it's going to be amazing so so excited okay um, and once again thank you thank you thank you if you've supported this we raised all the funds um, we have everything we need amen and there's actually some funds left over in the budget and so those are going to be just so you know if you gave towards that those funds are going to be moved to the funds we're raising for tanzania which is the end of july and so um it just gives us a good a good start for the next uh international trip we're going to be doing now for what that is is in tanzania there's a ministry there and a group of pastors and churches that do a large pastors conference every year for the entire nation. All denominations, they all come in, the pastors and leaders from all the churches in the entire nation. And um, they come together and they do a huge pastors conference each year, every um, July. And so they reached out to me three or four months ago and they asked if I would consider coming and being the main speaker and um, basically coming to release the apostolic anointing and the fire. And so um, we will be going to do that. <clears throat> now, when you support that, we're not necessarily doing mass crusades, but we're going there to train and equip their pastors and leaders. I'm gonna, we're going to be pouring into them. I'm going to be um, basically bringing the fire and the glory and just refreshing for the pastors and the leaders in the nation to be prepared to go back out and win souls. And so I'm honored to do it, you guys. I'm honored to go anywhere and release the glory. Um, we should all be living in the glory realms. This is where, you know, we receive our strength. This is where his presence is, is all things. And so I'm so excited to go and represent his presence um, for these leaders and so that's what will be happening in Tanzania now for American stuff very quickly I have two things and then I'm gonna get on with this word breaking the spirit of sabotage and this is what I'm gonna be talking about um, in connection to 
what God's doing t in times and seasons prophetically right now in the body of Christ, okay? Um, number two, you guys know we're doing Anointed to Win conference. This is based on my book that came out in 2023. Um, the entire book is based on breaking the deceptive spirit that comes against you to destroy basically, to make you live in your past, to destroy your present and take all the power of the cross out of you to live the way that Christ has called us to live and walk on the earth in your future. And so um, it's gonna be a two day deliverance conference and it's gonna be anointed to win. And it, we actually have a church, Paula White, thank you Jesus, um, City of Destiny, AKA Story Life now, they've changed the name. They have opened their doors and she is welcoming us to come and uh, they're gonna host the event there and the conference there. So very, very honored and excited to do use that space. And um, we'll probably have one or two of the pastors, Pastor Rachel Knight, um, her daughter-in-law, um, will be participating and speaking in one of the services and I'm gonna be bringing in one or two other people and uh, whoever God leads me to bring in. But that's the end of June, so it's kind of short notice, people. So if you follow me and you're someone that I run with and I might invite you to something, just have the weekend open in case I call you. I'm just kidding. I won't call you, somebody will. But anyway, um, uh, so we're excited about the conference. It's all deliverance, you guys. You're gonna learn how to, basically, you'll be unshakable by the end of the conference to the best of my ability through the fire and the glory of God, as he's called me to release it. Um, and then through the others that come and speak and pour into your life, um, you're gonna have freedom, deliverance, um, revelation. You're gonna learn a lot about um, the different manifestations and strongholds that participate with trying to destroy, to completely destroy your future. And so, and then we will end the event with, uh, I'm gonna do a mass commissioning like the Joshua commissioning, and you are gonna be anointed to win. You're gonna be imp receive an impartation of fire, but it's gonna be a little different than that. Um, you're gonna be being commissioned to go take the land, your promised land, whatever that is, and to be unshakable at the, in the end times because we're, we're here, you guys. There's, there's no question that we're here. Okay, so you can go to the website, register, for the conference. We will provide childcare for five and under for a small fee per child for those two days, but we need to know if you're gonna need childcare, okay? Um, so, so excited. And um, get registered. We wanna know you're coming. It's the last weekend in June, June 28th and 29th, that Friday and Saturday. Basically that f last weekend in June, we wanna see you. Um, in Apopka, Florida, it's basically City of Destiny Church, now changed to Story Life, and so um, we want to see you there. And the other thing is Louisiana. Okay, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that um, a ministry in Louisiana brought me in in 2021, and they had me come in because they they're just hungry for revival. And so they, they hosted me and they invited me in as a guest speaker. They wanted to put on a, a revival, basically, a two-day revival, fire, glory, all the stuff. And they invited me to come in and um, anywhere I go, I release prophecy. You're gonna get a word, the body of Christ is gonna get a word. And so um, when I came in, I had released a word. And when I released the word, here's what happened, it came to pass. So this is the expectation of all prophetic people or prophets. Um, my ministry is apostolic, but the main thing I do is the prophetic um, dreams, visions, and you know all that. So, um, but the Lord had given me a vision of the water there and um, the rivers of of His glory coming. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all that. But basically, it was going to bring cleansing first to prepare the way, and that there would be physical signs and wonders um, first. And so, as you know, a lot of times when God gives me a word about snow, water, um, 
fire in the desert. It comes with temperature changes and, you know, physical, because, you know, he's the boss. So, um, within three days of us leaving, it had already been forecasted that they were supposed to get like a half inch of rain, like, you know, a normal rain. And um, people were contacting me from Louisiana with videos. They were like, you're not going to believe this. It's been raining for three days straight. Your prophecy came to pass like within two days of you leaving. And we have had like 10 inches of rain. And it's been insane. And uh, everything's flooded. The cars are flooded. They sent me videos, you guys. And I was just like, whoa. And so right after that, the pastors contacted me within a month. I think it was about a month. And um, they were like, this, this, and this is happening. Cl mass cleansing, okay? Stuff that had to happen, you guys. It has to happen first. God is not using a dirty bride, a dirty church. There's no mixture. It's not happening, okay? So uh, he's going to clean the house first. And so all this stuff started going down. But it's amazing stuff. You guys, it's got to happen. And so um, she was talking to me over the last couple of months and she's just like pastor, the pastor, she got a hold of me, her and her husband, but she had got a hold of me and she was just like, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but man, we're so hungry for revival, but we haven't seen any movement since basically a lot of the cleansing stuff had happened. And, um, and she's like, I just don't know, you know? And so, um, we, and so they had been feeling led to reach out to the schools, be a part of the school, whatever. Their kids are grown, uh, well, young adults. And uh, they had felt like they were supposed to be a part of the school board and all this stuff. And they were like getting involved with stuff like spiritually within the schools and praying for the schools and all that. And so um, we're going to be coming in. Um, the, the revival we did in Oklahoma with the Gen Z's and the youth. They're asking if we can come in and do the same thing there to begin to just spark revival and see what God does because they have literally already been praying for the schools and everything. And I was like, well, it sounds like you need to start with the young people. And so they were like, well, can you come do what you guys did in Oklahoma here? Um, we'll bring you in. And so uh, we're coming back to Louisiana, you guys, and excited about that. Um, honored to go back and do everything that God's called me to do to participate. Um, he often calls us back to the places where I went and prophesied and then prophecies came to pass. Um, and so we're going to go and do all that God's called us to do and take the fire and glory there and hopefully um, fill some young adults and youth with the fire, amen, and the glory of God and start wrecking some wrecking some people and um very very excited about that so louisiana that's going to be in september so be paying attention okay um okay on to the word you guys i'm sorry but i had a lot of updates for you and i wanted to really say thank you to those who um generous generously gave for kenya and uh it, it was just beyond blessed you know uh you guys and your partnership with the ministry and everything anyway there's no words you guys um there's just no words and so um um so basically the lord's been talking to me about the spirit of sabotage and um i knew i was gonna have to do a word on it and i was just like man uh my son behind me um we're on our way to the airport y'all um anyway but um you guys have to understand, I can't go into all of it with this video because it could literally be a book. Honestly, I got books, you guys. I'm getting with it. I'm working on it. So, um, but um, the spirit of sabotage works two different ways. It either attacks you and you don't even know it's the spirit of sabotage or it attacks, it's being, it's being brought through other people. Commonly, it happens through other people. It's annoying, you guys, um, but this is the way it is, okay? Um, people carry around demons, okay? And so, 
And I say that with love. We love you. We want to cast them out. But the thing is, is there's specific spirits that are here to do the job, okay? Um, and uh, the job of destroying God alignment. So now, how does that connect with the prophetic times and seasons and the prophecies right now? As you know, I'm not the only prophet who has been releasing a lot of words about um, the birthing, the open doors, uh, all the different things God's doing in the bride and the body of Christ. Now, you know, my call and mantle, if you want to call it, it is literally since 2019, well, 2018, has been everything about uh, purifying the bride, making you unshakable, so you can actually be the true end time remnant. This is the call he's given me. And so everything I say always leads to maybe like, like a third of a whooping, but I don't intend it. Jesus just loves you, you guys. He don't want you to stay the same. And so, um, but um, he disciplines those he loves, amen? And I'm very happy to be disciplined. I don't wanna stay the same. I don't wanna hurt his heart. I don't wanna offend him. I, I don't want to do any of those things and I want to be ready for what's coming you guys because if you're not unshakable you ain't gonna make it it's just it's just reality and so um, the spirit of sabotage basically how it's connected to times and seasons is okay God's doing all this major work in the body of Christ we're in a birthing season we're in open door season. We're in closing old doors, whether it's emotionally in your heart, old ministries, uh, parts to your ministry that God wants you to prune, um, pruning that God's been doing, exposure of Jezebels and Absaloms and all the this religious spirits, all the fun ones, you know, that need to go. And so, um, so as he's been doing that, He's then preparing the people as he's pruned to make way for more fruit. And as you know, from the beginning of the year, the Lord's been, and I'm not the only prophet, and I'm not, I don't have to be naming other people, but there's a couple of others that are right on point. They just release it differently than me, but we're all saying the same thing to the body of Christ, okay? Um, but basically, there's going to be obstacles. There's going to be, it's, it's going to be, feel like obstacles go back and watch all the words I released since January every one of them build to the next thing the next level the next thing big revelation you've got to know um, to understand what God's doing and why he's doing it and so um, in a season of birthing as you as you know in the one word I the Lord gave me basically said um, I'm bringing new alignments I'm bringing new marriages, kingdom marriages. I'm bringing new relationships. Um, I'm bringing new, new, new. All these new things, new jobs, new careers, um, new business ventures, uh, whatever it is, new. And when heaven is orchestrating it, the enemy doesn't not want it because it scares him half to death at what it could mean because he, he, he's dumb, but he is not that dumb. He's watching what God's doing. He's like, wait a minute. Why is it so important to God that that ministry get connected to that ministry and they work together to do this over here? Hmm. There must be something up. And so then he begins to go, huh, how can I sabotage that? How can I block it, hinder it, and delay it um, in whatever way the sabotaging spirit can do it, get sent out because he don't know what's going to happen, but he wants to disrupt whatever just in case because he's like, okay, if God's doing this, that means it's important to heaven. And then he wants to ruin it. The devil wants to ruin it, you guys. Anytime you follow God's leading and you are not in your kind of okay, God will, you know, God's will, but not really his will. When you're going into his perfect will, it usually will mean all things come together 
for exactly what his glory and his presence and his spirit and, and heaven wants. That they it's been planned since the beginning of time. And it all it irritates the devil for any of these alignments to come to pass, these new births, these open doors, that he don't want you walking through them, you guys. He wants you to either be focused on the old door that was shut, um, old fears, and so I'm gonna I'm going to go into all that, but I'm going to read this word first. So as he's been talking to me about that, then he woke me up with this song. And this is going to be being posted in written form um, on my social media um, in the next couple days. But um, So you'll have it in written form. But when the, when the Lord had me prepare the word, I was like, whoa, it is totally the sabotage word. So I'm going to read it. Um, and so... Uh, um, the Lord had woke me up all throughout the night with um, basically this statement over and over playing in my spirit. Um, you are faithful. That's who you are. You are more than able to care for my heart. So all night long, God had been waking me up with that statement over and over. And so when I woke up in the morning, I was like, oh man, because I always know. So then I knew that was a Josh Baldwin song. And I was like, I know that song. I know I know which song that is. But anyway, so I found the song. And so what typically I will do in obedience to the spirit is I will listen to the song on repeat for hours and just sit under it and, and just try to hear what the spirit is trying to say through the message, you know, and um, so that's what I did. I just sat and I was just like, okay, God, I know this is a word for your people because that's usually what he does. He ends up giving me a times and seasons word. And so as I'm listening to it, um, uh, I'm just letting it play, like probably played 20 times before every hour by Josh Baldwin. Okay. I, I let it play like 20 times. And then um, I was like, okay, God, what are you trying to say? I know this is a message for your people. And um, this is a couple of lyrics. I typed it up, you guys, because then I can read it. Not my slot. Although, I, I do like using my journal. Okay, here's the reason why a lot of times I read out of my journal. You guys want me to tell you? Because um, electronics don't like me. And uh, they stop working. A lot of times when I'm holding them. And I'm trying to use them. And so I, they start going, bzz, bzz, you know, for real. Um, this is why I don't use my tablet. Um, I always used to always use my tablet to speak at any event or at any, any when I get invited or whatever. I always have my tablet. Um, and I type up the word and I put it on there and I just release the prophecy off of that. But I had to quit doing that because the tablet would not work, you guys. Okay. So... Um, I would give the tablet to my assistant. She would get it to work and get it all ready for me. But then as soon as I went up there and I touched it, everything started going bzz, 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 and it would not work. And so, um, uh, we realized that that was suspect and, um, it just is what it is. So... Um, there's lots of different reasons for that, you guys, but I cannot go into that. But, um, so then I was like, well, I'm just going to put it on my phone and I'll read the prophecy for my phone, my notes for my phone. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Um, evidently when I'm really, really deep in worship, preparing to release and speak or whatever, um, there's too much glory. And so there's not. But evidently for the electronics in the room, there's too much glory. So then my phone wouldn't work. And I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, Jesus. So I have to read things out of my journal, you guys. And a lot of times I write them down very quickly. And I'm a little sloppy sometimes. So anyway, okay. So I wrote this down. Amen. So you guys are getting it not confused, okay? So these are the lyrics to the song faithful that's who you are more than able to care for my heart father and friend there till the end you are faithful oh god 
And so this is what the Lord said to me. Liberty, my people need to keep judging me faithful. I am faithful. I am more than able to care for their hearts. They must trust me as I lead their hearts into my will for them. My people must know, I know, and he says in quotations, yep, he's sassy. In quotations, this is how he has, when he has me put quotations, it's totally the Holy Spirit, you guys. Um, I know them better than they know themselves. I know what's best and I'm very good at choosing for you. I see all the hidden things in your mind and heart. The hidden things you didn't know were there. Good and bad things. There are many good things I wanted to bring, I want to, that I want to bring to the surface. Trust me as I bring them up. I'm very good at caring for your, for the hearts of those who love me. Let me bring them up with joy as I prepare to tend to your heart, um, tend to the good things I placed in you. You guys, sometimes when he lets stuff up, it's not because it's just all bad. Sometimes the good has to, you know, I'll get into that. Um, the good things I placed in you. It's time to bring life to those hidden good things. As these good things come up and out, the old bad things will also attempt to resurface. Hidden fears, hidden insecurities, hidden presumed failures, hidden pain from old rejection and old wounds. Let me tend to those also, my people, give them to me and allow me to pluck them out. Those old weeds, pluck them out, those old weeds and make room for the hidden good fruit to come up and grow for a beautiful harvest of abundance that I have been preparing for you to receive and enjoy. Give me your heart, my people. I'm more than able to care for it. Judge me faithful. And then I'm just gonna read the verses that he gave me immediately in the spirit as I was writing it. He was he was telling me uh, scripture verse references, okay? And I just write them down as I go, the reference. And so, being confident of this very thing, that he who has began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, Philippians 1, 6. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices and with my song I will praise him. Um, I will praise him. Psalms 28, 7. And so, um, and we're going to do this declaration at the end. But basically, the Lord's like liberty. My people need to understand as I'm taking them through these seasons of transition, new beginnings, new alignments, new marriages, uh, new relationships, new ministry connections, new careers. Um, new moves. Maybe he's calling you to move to another state. Um, and it's all God's will. Whatever it is, um, things are going to come up and are going to, and you know, I've already talked about this. He wants to get to the gold. There's gold in there. He wants to get to it, but he's got to de-weed you guys. He's got to remove stuff to get to the gold in you so that you can be the gold that the purified refined gold that he needs you to be now here's the issue he's like people judge me faithful i can care for your heart i can protect you i know what's best for you i'm doing it i'm with you i'm for you you have all of heaven backing you up trust me that i can care for your heart and so the spirit of sabotage wants to come in and steal all of that from you. The, sabot the spirit of sabotage, so here's how it works when it comes against you personally, not through another person, but just through your own thoughts and, and all of that, is um, when these old things, like this word says, when the bad things pop up that still exist, the weeds, um, they have to get out of the way for the fresh good stuff to be implanted. So when he's tending your heart like you're a garden, okay, he's got to de-weed. 
and he's got to clean up stuff and water it well and prune and trim back. And so when he's doing that, um, those old things that are weeds, he wants to remove. He needs you to see them, recognize them, defeat them, and let them go. But the devil, when they come up, is like, oh, remember this? That's the spirit of sabotage. You're not good enough. Don't even try that. You're going to be rejected. Remember, you failed before. You're just going to fail again. Really? You really think, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a new job you're trying or it's a big move to another state or a new alignment or God's going to bring uh, a kingdom marriage into your life or a kingdom, uh, some kind of ministry alignment, connection, those are all key. Because you know what? You don't want to be aligned with nobody that has mixture. I'm just telling you. I don't play no games. When I start whatever, you're out. Uh-uh. I ain't even playing. And so I got stories, you guys. I have lots of stories. And so, but the spirit of sabotage wants to keep you far away from the heavenly alignments, heavenly plans that God has been planning since the beginning of time and get you to focus on the weeds that he's removing. And it wants you to dwell on that weed gets pulled up. God wants it up and out. He wants it cut off. He wants the power and the root removed. But the spirit of sabotage wants that weed to keep speaking lies to you, to keep saying things that are not true, um, where you where now you're not trusting God with your heart. You're not allowing him to tend to everything. You're not trusting him with the new baby, with the new alignment, the new relationship, or the, the one that's coming, he's preparing you for, whatever that is. Um, the, the new career, the big move he has for you, um, the new marriage, whatever they are, the devil doesn't want you to, he wants you to stop believing that the Lord knows how to care for you. And so the Lord is saying to his people, I'm walking you through these stages, times and seasons for the end time glory to prepare you to be my remnant. And you've got to trust me to tend to your heart and let me do it. Let me do it. Let me de-weed and do it with joy. And I'll just tell you this, you guys. I know people probably think it's a little, I'm a little, like, weird or something. But I enjoy when he de-weeds. I'm like, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Amen. I don't want nothing you don't want. I don't want no Ishmaels. Nope. I thank God every day for no Ishmaels. Praise Jesus. Nope. And so, let me give you an example, okay? So, last year, I was like, okay, Jesus, I'm getting a little annoyed with some of the stuff on my YouTube channel. And this ministry, you called me to it. You told me to do it. I did not mean for that to rhyme. And this is all you. And um, I was being obedient to you when I started this ministry and this channel. So, um, but you know, I don't like some things. You know, and so I was like, start showing me how I need to, you know, de-weed. Okay. And so this is what led to shutting off comments and doing all this stuff because I was just like, Lord, I'm so tired of giving the, the, the trolls and the Jezebels and everybody else a platform to give them a right to comment on something, put their little bit of deception out there in my feed that's mixture. I don't want it and I don't like it. And so, and I don't want to have to make someone have to keep going through and deleting all the weeds, you know? And so, um, I, so just so you understand, that's why I stopped allowing comments. And so, because I'm done with giving the trolls a platform. All of you faithful followers that have been with me for years, I love you. And I love your comments and your dreams and your visions and your testimonies. But I've, I had to find a way to cut off the trolls. 
um, and they'll just move on to someone else. And so, um, because they're not listening to me to hear the word of the Lord and become his pure bride, they're just being a troll. And so I'm not giving them a platform. And so I, gave, I, I took that right away from them. And so because of that, I've lost like over, ever since I stopped comments, like over a hundred subscribers. And you know what I say to, say to that? Praise Jesus. Bring it. Bye-bye. I don't want the weeds. Go subscribe and follow someone else and bring in purity and everything else. I don't want it no more. I'm not giving you a platform. And so, um, sayonara. And I knew too, when I stopped comments, I was like, I'm gonna lose subscribers, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the, the best ones that I need to lose. Amen? Because uh, I've been de-weeding some things because I'm done with the weeds. And so, um, I'm done with the tears. And so, um, amen, we should all be done. And so, um, so what you need to understand is as the spirit of sabotage comes, its entire goal is to get you off focus of what God has already told you, what heaven has already planned, what he's already revealed to you, where he's taking you, what he has for you, what he wants to do in you. He's already, okay. Um, he's already, you know, wanting to just do whatever he can. And it's kind of like the thing with Eve, you know, how he deceived Eve. And um, really, is it really wrong to eat this, you know? And so what it is, is he wants you to think God will not back you up. God will not help you. God will not be there. That, that if it's God, it's going to go beautiful and exactly how it's supposed to go. The devil wants you to think the opposite. That's the spirit of sabotage. He wants to destroy the divinely ordained plans of God through people. And so he'll do that to attack you with the weeds that God's removing. The fears, the insecurities, the failureism, the rejection. Wrote a book about it. Read it. Um, he wants to use all that. Now, from other sources, the spirit of sabotage could be working through other people. And so then now their voice, the, what they're saying to you, their counsel, their advice, it ends up being word curses because it's not of God. It's speaking against heaven's agenda, heaven's plan for your life, for your ministry. And if that is not God's plan for you, now that goes beyond just being a word curse. It's the spirit of sabotage at work to ruin you from aligning with heaven. And so then it, it throws you off and people will spend years, you guys, uh, not aligned in the right way, unaligned with heaven. And then it takes them years to get back on track if they don't recognize the spirit of sabotage and which is work, turns into word curses and everything else from people from the outside. And sometimes, I'll just tell you this, you guys, people mean well. But if it is not right for you, it ain't right for you. If it is not God's divine plan for you, it is not God's divine plan. It's that simple. So then it becomes a sabotage to your future if you submit to it, if you come under under it. Now you're submitting not to heaven's plan. You're not believing that God knows how to tend to your heart. You're letting someone else's voice make decisions for you. And God's going, uh-uh, that's not what I'm saying. I already told you what I want you to do and what it is. You do not question yourself because of that person. So just so you understand, that person can have the spirit of sabotage working through them. You guys, we've been through it all. I got books. And they're coming. They're on the way. Praise Jesus. Um... And so this is what I wrote at the very end, which is gonna be put on social media. 
and then I'm going to pray with you and we're going to break the spirit of sabotage. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And, um, anything that leads you to think the opposite of who God says you are, think the opposite of what he's already told you. If he has brought it to you through dreams, visions, angelic visitations, uh, a random prophetic word from someone you trust that there's no way they could have known nothing. God's been trying to get through to you. And the spirit of sabotage will come in and, and be like, you know, give you 30 excuses why it can't be God or whatever. And you've got to break it and bind it, you guys. Um, there's times we have to do warfare. There's times that we have to basically get jiggy with the devil, you guys. Get jiggy with the devil. And so um, we got all kinds of activity going on. We're pulling off the road, you guys. Just track with us. Um, and so um, we're having fun. This is our drive to Miami. Whoop, whoop. Pulling off to go to the bathroom, and uh, we're being sent to Porta John's, it looks like. Yay, woohoo. Okay, so. Um, you guys, here's what I'm going to recommend. Even if you don't know if it's at work, I want you to start praying this prayer every day in your prayer time as a part of your, when you pray for your family, you cover yourself in the blood. I don't know your routine. You should have a routine of the physical prayers that you pray that are not in tongues where you give voice so the enemy knows you ain't playing. Okay. And so I'm going to show you how to do that here in a second. And you need to do it just in case there's something that is trying to sabotage what God wants to do in your life. And it's the, the divine, holy, heavenly things that he has for you. Okay. So this is what I wrote. Um, oh, Lord, we will count you faithful. We declare we will trust you with our heart and trust you to tend to it properly. Forgive us, oh, Lord. When we don't trust your ways, we declare you are more than able to carry to care for our heart. Lord, we give you our heart, our plans, our future, and we say, um, we say, do with it what you will. Oh, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you because you take the best care of us. And so we're basically saying to the Lord that um, we trust you. Um, you guys can go out if you need to. Mm -hmm. Um, they didn't want to leave me by myself. I am a big girl, you guys. Okay. Not big, but like inside my head. Okay. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, you guys, he is fully capable of caring for our hearts and we need, and so Here's the big revelation. Thank him and go, whoa, man, God, I repent. I repent for not trusting you to care for my heart. Trusting you that, that what I know is beautiful is actually beautiful and I don't have to fear and I don't have to be all stressed out and I don't have to question you to death. I don't have to let the spirit of sabotage come in and um, constantly bring in a block, a block, a block through lying weeds. And so we have to get to the point where number one, we repent for not acknowledging that he is God and he's very capable. Then we need to thank him and say, man, oh God, thank you. Thank you that you care for our, our heart. Thank you. Woo. I can feel the glory that you can do it way better than we can. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. We're sorry when we make it about us. We're sorry when we don't hear you and we allow the enemy to be louder. Forgive us, Lord. Man, because when we're doing that, we're not being thankful. We're not even recognizing the beauty of what is provided to us, which is a beautiful, beautiful God who tends to us, you guys. And we can trust him. We can trust him. And so, um, whoo, man, I can feel the glory. Um, It's very easy for the devil to steal your thankfulness, you guys. 
And man, it's a weapon against him. I'm telling you, it's a weapon. Um, it's a weapon. And so, so this is what you're going to do. Okay. We're going to pray to break the spirit of sabotage. And I want you to repeat after me. We're going to do it together, deliverance style. And then in the mornings, you're just going to rebuke it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in general. Okay. But let's pray together and get it off of you. Okay. So you're just going to repeat after me. We're going to repent. We're going to um, renounce. And then I'm going to break the yoke. You don't got to repeat after me when I break the yoke. It's very quick and easy. And then I'm going to explain to you then how you take, break it off your kids, your family, all the things. Okay. So are you guys ready? Okay. Repeat after me. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive me for partnering with the spirit of sabotage. I repent, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And then now we're going to renounce. And you repeat after me. I renounce the spirit of sabotage. I break all contracts previously made with this spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you can lay hands on yourself. I'm going to break the yoke. You can do these prayers on your own, you guys. Um, Lord, I just break the yoke of sabotage off of every person at the sound of my voice. We bind you, sabotage. We command you to loose every person. We uproot you. We cast you to the ground. And we declare what the Lord says about their future, their open doors, their alignments, um, your divine plans for them. We declare that those things that are true be released over them and that every lie spoken by the spirit of sabotage be cut down now in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, guys, now what you're going to do is on a daily basis, if you know you've been being attacked with this, every day just say, um, I rebuke you, spirit of sabotage. I command you to take your hands off of me, my husband or my wife, my children, my household, my ministry or my career or your job, um, whatever it is, off your finances. Bind the spirit of sabotage off of your finances and then bind, uh, release the opposite over them. So you loose the opposite, you guys. And so what Christ says is true. You loose it to go do its work and you bind sabotage. I'm telling you, it's powerful. You're going to feel weights lifted. If you didn't feel it right now, the, the yoke being broken. Um, it's powerful. You guys, he contends to your heart better than you could ever dream of. We have to lay it out and give it to him and let him be the one. He has to be the one. Amen. And we have to trust him to do it because then it goes into all these other things. And then now you're not even trusting him. You're not even believing that um, he has the ability to do it. You don't even know the whole time you have removed your, your thankfulness and now you're being ungrateful. You don't even know it. And the whole time God's like, man, I am trying to tend to your heart. I am the best one. I created you. I know what's best for you. I can choose everything for you. And you can trust me with my choices for you. Now, you're probably thinking, well, I love his choices for me. I think they're amazing. But at the same time, the weeds come up, you guys. They've got to go. And the spirit of sabotage highlight, highlights the weeds so that you only focus on those and then you forget the beauty of what is actually true and what God is saying from heaven. Amen. Okay. I love you guys. Um, you might not hear from us. Maybe I'll post a video or two from Africa if I have signal and I can, sometimes it's very suspect in those places. So, um, we're going to have a riot of a good time. And, and I'm so, so excited. You guys be on honored. Like there's no words. Um, I'm just excited to go do everything God's called me to do there and um, see miraculous miracle signs and wonders um, in the glory realms and uh, soul saved and everything. It's going to be amazing. Okay. I love you guys. And I will see you when I'm back in America. No, you might see me before then. Okay.
I love you guys.